a lot of you guys asked for this one. So we are gonna do a rear sway bar install on my Land Rover Discovery. We're gonna use some junkyard parts, some different things that I have laying around here in the shop. And we're gonna talk about why you would want a sway bar in the first place. So you can decide if you need one on your rig. Today's video is brought to you by Empire Abrasives. All of the metal cutting, shaping, and forming that you see me do in these videos is all done with abrasive discs, grinding discs, cutoff wheels, and belts that I got from Empire Abrasives. They have the absolute best combination of low prices and high quality standards that I've found on the internet. So if you're looking for ways to save money in your next project, make sure you check out Empire. And if you save even more money, use coupon code DIRTLIFESTYLE at checkout. As you can see, we've got a table full of sway bars here, and these are just sway bars that I had laying around in the back of the shop. Whenever I pull a sway bar off one of the projects that I build, I keep, I keep it, I hold on to it. You never know when you might need something like this in the future, and so I hold on to these. And I think that sway bars are really important. This is the factory rear sway bar that came on Discovery, which is crazy because that's narrow enough to go on a quad. <laughs> it's pretty bananas that this worked on that Discovery. It no longer works on the Discovery, and to be honest with you, it's so narrow and it's gonna have such little impact on the sway of the rear suspension that even if I could just bolt it right up, which I can't, um, I wouldn't wanna use this because it's not gonna give me the amount of control that I want. Now I could do a really rigid sway bar like this. This was the factory sway bar that came on the front of the Discovery. And if you guys watch the series where I built all this, you know that I put an anti-rock in the front. So it's already got a front sway bar. And the anti-rock is great because it's much thinner, allowing much more wheel travel, so you don't have to disconnect it when you go off road. In fact, it gives you more traction when you go off road, and we'll get to that in a minute. But this sway bar would be great for rear application on the highway because it's gonna make it to where that rear won't sway at all, but then we'd have to disconnect it when we go off road, and I like to have a rear sway bar when I go off road, so this, plus packaging could be an issue because it just goes straight across, making it to where it would have to hang down. Um, so the next step up from this would be an anti-rock. And this is an anti-rock for uh, one of my TJ projects and it works great, but because it just goes, this bar just goes straight across, it, the, it's a packaging problem. I can't put it in front of the axle because the links are gonna hit it. And if I put it behind the axle and I mount it across the bottom of that fuel tank, it ends up hanging down kind of low and I don't really want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do the best with what I have laying around. We're gonna use this Jeep TJ rear sway bar and this is from like a 98 to 06 Jeep Wrangler. And this actually mounts on the axle, which is why it's got this little bump out right here to clear the axle. And then it just has two little mounting points that go up and mount to the chassis right there. This is gonna be better than the factory one because it's wider. So since it's wider, it's actually gonna take less movement of the chassis in order to start to engage the extra spring rate of this sway bar. And so what we'll do right now is we're gonna go over to the whiteboard and we're gonna talk about why you would want a sway bar and if you need a sway bar. Every part and piece you add or remove to your 4x4 is gonna have a list of pros and cons and a sway bar is no different. We've got a list of pros here and a list of cons and there's a lot of cons that people don't think about with sway bars so make sure that you fully understand what it is that you're doing before you add them. So with the pros, we've got less body roll. I think that goes without saying. This is the whole purpose of the sway bars to make it to where your chassis is in line with your axle and anytime there's a difference between the two planes, you're going to increase or decrease spring rate on one side or the other and that's gonna influence the way the body acts. So on highway speeds, less body roll is great but whenever you're going down dirt roads, it's not so great and we'll get to that in a minute. The other, the other big con is more traction. So for us, this is a very top heavy overland build the main reason we're doing this is for less body roll, but one of the biggest benefits of doing it is more traction off-road. Because if you look at my very crude drawings here, got a front bumper, this is just looking towards the, uh, from the front of the vehicle down the chassis, right? We've got a tire, a tire, an axle going across, and in blue is our sway bar. You can't really see the arms because it's a two-dimensional drawing, but bear with me. You climb, you start to climb over a rock. What this is gonna do is it's gonna increase spring rate on the rock going, or sorry, it's gonna increase spring rate on the tire going down onto the rock. It's gonna decrease spring rate on the low tire side. So it's gonna actually be making that tire lighter because gravity is pulling down on this tire and it's transferring that energy onto this one. But because it's transferring that energy, it makes this lighter. And that's because you're twisting your sway bar. 
pretty simple concept if you think about it. So I have noticed whenever I have front and rear sway, uh, sway bars on a vehicle, it rock crawls way better because you've always got that crazy traction on you know, two of your tires if you have one in the rear as well. And also, a little sidebar, I think that it's important to use them in unison, so to have a front and rear at the same time, because what'll happen is whenever you increase spring rate here, if the rear suspension's soft enough, it'll start to absorb some of that spring rate, making it to where it's less effective on pulling this lower tire up and pushing this upper tire down. Your rear suspension will start to absorb that, but if but the rear suspension have a, has a sway bar on it as well, then it'll maintain that energy up here. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, the cons. Cost is a big one. These sway bars are not cheap whenever you buy them in the aftermarket. Um, so you just gotta decide on your build if you're gonna try to do what I'm doing here and retrofit something that's a used part or if you're gonna buy new. Weight, it's not a whole lot of weight, but you're adding weight and this Land Rover is already so heavy. So it bums me out to have to add even more weight, but it comes at a really big benefit. So for us, it's worth it. Um, these can be complicated to install. If you have a TJ, a JK or you know any modern Jeep, it's very easy to get a sway bar for it. The aftermarket is huge. So it makes it to where that is an easy install. But for everybody else that can't just get a sway bar out of a catalog, it's complicated because of packaging. Usually you've, you're, they're sending you a straight bar that you gotta go across the chassis somewhere. You've got suspension that'll get in the way. You've got gas tank that'll get in the way. You'll have exhaust that gets in the way. All kinds of stuff makes it complicated to install. So we're, we're, we're trying to figure out a way today to make it uncomplicated. And that's why we're using a bar that mounts on the axle instead of on the chassis. Anyway, you will get worse ride quality like we were talking about earlier. So if you are going off road, let's say you're going down a dirt road. Whenever you have a pothole and one tire drops down on one side or the other, it's going to influence your chassis. And this is something that I've noticed personally. So what will happen is the body will roll so much more off road because of the unstable conditions. Like you're going 20 miles an hour down a dirt road. You feel those potholes so much worse because it's swaying the body back and forth. Whereas if you were not connected with a sway bar, those tires can move much more independently and the only thing that's gonna sway your body is the valving of the shock. So if you have soft enough shocks, it'll just soak those bumps up, no problem. But with a sway bar, you are adding spring rate and decreasing spring rate one way or the other, and it's making it to where you're gonna have a harsher off-road ride quality. Basically all that I need to do to marry this Jeep sway bar to this Land Rover Discovery is build a set of mounts on the axle and then connect our links at the chassis. I've got enough small scrap material laying around that making some mounts shouldn't be a problem at all. And I've got a couple of ideas on how to mount these links to the frame that we will get to once we get everything mounted up on the axle. As you can see, we've got these little brackets mounted in place. I've just got them tacked in there uh, so we can figure out where to mount on the chassis. And I've got an idea for that. I've got these uh, threaded weld washers from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. And so what I wanna do is I wanna drill a hole in the frame, uh, put the weld washer on there, weld it to it, and then we'll have a threaded hole that we can then bolt the other link through the frame. So anyway, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Weld washers. See, it's a weld washer. <laughs> you drill a hole um, just to this inner dimension, put it in the hole, and then you weld the outside. And you've got a threaded hole. It's pretty slick. Get these at Barnes four wheel drive. Um, and then I am going to upgrade our sway bar links. And uh, these sway bar links are quick disconnect, but they're also adjustable. And I like the fact that they're adjustable. So, and in the future, if I decided to, I could just disconnect the sway bar with these uh, quick connects. I forgot that I had this other sway bar back there and it had these adjustable links on it. So we're gonna upgrade 
the links that are on that one. We're just gonna hodgepodge a bunch of Nate's spare parts together to make something that works. There we have it. We have a free to me rear sway bar. Um, and it's something that is very practical. I think a lot of people could do, and this is an easy upgrade. Now, something to consider if you are looking into upgrading your sway bar or just putting a sway bar in whatever four by four you might have. And uh, you are looking at, uh, you wanna go to the junkyard and start to find parts that might bolt on. I would highly consider going with Jeep parts before everything else because of the fact that there's such a crazy amount of aftermarket support for Jeeps. And uh, the reason I bring this up specifically is this is a very thin sway bar. This is definitely gonna be better than no sway bar. There's no doubt about it, but is it gonna be stiff enough? Maybe not. The good thing is I can go online, I could type in Jeep TJ rear sway bar and boom, there's a whole bunch of options for upgraded stiffer rear sway bars. So this is the benefit of retrofitting Jeep parts into whatever four x four that you have because it's gonna make it to where you have access to all that Jeep stuff. If you follow Ian Johnson um, from Big Tire Garage, you'll see that he does that a lot these days. He takes classic, awesome trucks, he puts them on Jeep JK frames, and then you have every, you have all that access to all of that Jeep JK aftermarket support for suspension and drivetrain and just bolt-in axles and all that stuff. It's so much easier than having to custom fab every single part and piece like we did the rest of this discovery. So anyway, before I just ramble on forever, uh, let's put a little bow on this thing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you wanna help support the channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, net gaiters, stickers, all that stuff. Um, and we have a link to our Patreon account there as well. And we're pushing hard on Patreon lately. I really like the community that we're building on there. And we're doing videos for them every week. We're doing uh, fan rides with our patrons. So if that's something that you're into, make sure that you go and check out that community. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.